So welcome to my first thoughts on The Legend of Nyuta Boundless Trails, originally released in 2012 for the PlayStation Portable exclusively in Japan. This remaster is the first time the West has seen this title properly localized. Developed by Falcom and published by NIS America, released for the Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, and PC via Steam on September 19th. Speaking of which, thanks going out to Nice America for providing me with an early release copy of this game for review purposes. Before I get too into my thoughts of this game, I just want to mention that The Legend of Nyuta is not directly related to any of the previous Trails games. It shares the Kiseki namesake, however story-wise it is standalone and has no connection to any other of the Kiseki titles. With that being said, you can play it without having any other Trails experience and still have a great time. Just a disclaimer, all the footage and my first thoughts are from the prologue chapter of the game. Spoilers should not be present, but be cautious anyways. Everything that you are seeing is captured from the Nintendo Switch version of the game. Anyways, pull up a chair, grab a drink, and take a listen to my first thoughts and opinions on The Legend of Nyuta Boundless Trails. Normally, when talking about a game, I want to start with story, but I want to get the negativity out of the way first. The Legend of Nyuta makes it incredibly clear that it is a PSP port. The models and backgrounds have been slightly cleaned up here and there, but they still look very early 3D. I can deal with that, just throw a smoothing filter and update the game to 1080p or 4k and I'm alright with that. However, that's not the real culprit. The true culprit is the bloom. This game constantly looks like you have the brightness cranked up three full notches, resulting in the game looking overly bright but somehow washed out. This seems to mostly be limited to outside of dungeons and in cutscenes, it just looks very off. It's not just the brightness of the TV, I've checked in handheld and on multiple different TVs and monitors, it's just overly bright for no reason. You can kind of adjust to it, but it still feels quite a bit off. Okay, now that the rough stuff is out of the way, let's get into the more positive aspects. The game starts with your main hero Nayuda returning to his home, Remnant Island. Nayuda is a research off to look for a mysterious land called Lost Heaven, just like his parents before him. After training and helping out a few of the town folks, a meteor crashes onto Remnant Island and a fairy appears, eventually opening up a portal to Lost Heaven Nayuda and his late parents have been searching for. It's relatively cliche, but fun nonetheless. The characters from the get-go are cute and very friendly faces. You have the super positive main hero who believes he can do anything he puts his mind to, his tough but protective older brother who sometimes acts like a jerk, and his sister who is more or less a homemaker. I personally like the characters thus far and really enjoy their interactions. The gameplay of The Legend of Nyuta honestly feels, if you took the E series, stripped it down to the main basics, restricted exploration to a linear path, and separated areas into stages and threw in a trails quest system. So far, you have one main four hit combo, a dodge roll, and a double jump. Stages consist of platforming and killing monsters with your sword. It's basic, but it's fun. This format might seem a bit off being played on a home console. However, as a portable game, which it was originally designed for, it works really well. When you are in Nyota's hometown, you can help the townspeople with quests very similar to Trails in the Sky or Trails of Cold Steel. These quests can be something like getting a guard his lunch, or doing training with your teacher. I didn't have much experience with quests at this point, but they seem relatively simplistic. One thing that threw me off with the quests is instead of talking to people with the main talk button, there's a specialized quest button. It seems like an odd inclusion, but it seems to work well, I guess. Overall, the game plays very well. It's quick and snappy, the boost of 60 FPS is incredibly nice. I didn't recognize any frame drops on the Switch version, definitely a smooth experience. Ah, music. My favorite part of every Falcom game. Not a surprise, as Falcom Sound Team JDK is solid with every game that they do. The music has a very calm theme to it, it's not super upbeat like the E series, though there are a few headbangers. I would relate it closer to the Trail series as far as compositions go. Falcom constantly knocks out of the park in the music department, and Nayuta is no different. Many different songs, and every one of them are enjoyable. That's one thing you can always expect. When you have a Falcom game, you're gonna have some amazing music. It really carries the game and the developer as a whole. Overall, I've really enjoyed what I've played. Outside of the strange decision to go with the incredible amounts of bloom alongside the stiff animations and models, The Legend of Nyuta has been a very enjoyable experience so far. I'm looking forward to playing more of this game. Are you? 
Or have you already picked up The Legend of Nyuta Boundless Trails? If so, what do you think about it? Let me know in the comments below. If you want more JRPG content, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. That's the meat and potatoes, folks. Thanks for tuning in, and have a wonderful day.